The question was asked about John the Baptist and his calling, whether it was right to point out the sins of others and the mistakes of others. You know? And I answered about the calling that John the Baptist has. And there, was a, there were a lot of questions that were asked and I was too tired to answer them. So I thought I'd make a video. First of all, John the Baptist was called to prepare the way for the Messiah. Why on earth did the Messiah come? Why was the law of Moses given? Why were the Pharisees following the law and not Jesus Christ? Where Christ stood in front of them saying, you search for me in the scriptures, but hallelujah. See, God knew that you and I were going to be engulfed in sin. And he sent the Messiah while we were sinners. He sent Christ to save us. While we were in sin, God sent his own son not to condemn us in sin, but to save us from the sin. That is what Jesus Christ came for. For God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever might believe in him might be saved. And God did not send his Son to condemn the world. Hallelujah. Therefore, if you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. Now, but the Apostle Paul tells you and me not to have anything to do with those who continue to deny the power of the cross or what Jesus has done for us, who calls ourselves or himself or herself a brother or brother and yes. In other words, if you say, I can't help it, but I fall into sin anyway, no. That is wrong. That is denying the power of Jesus. You are to point that out to them, but not fall in that error, but to, for them to come out of that error. Hallelujah. Let me explain. If I find a brother sinning, I'm to point out, yes, that sin. But why do I have to point that out? See, it all goes back, like I said, why was the law of Moses given? See, God has his way. We doubted God and we made our own way. Now, God always has his own way and his way, his portion, his inheritance was and is Israel. Yes, because they say so, yes. And uh, you have the table of nations, you have the other gods, but in that the Messiah came. So through the Messiah, we have an escape. Therefore, there is no condemnation if you believe in the Messiah. Knowing that you are in sin and sin engulfs you, permeates you, just like you get dirty every day, yes? And if you say you are without sin, guess what? You're deceiving yourself, yes? So, while it is good to point out other people's sin, well, it can be considered good, but it's pharisaical, yes? You have to understand that you're in sin, and they're in sin, everybody's sin, and Christ has come to save us. And in Christ, we become a new creation, and sin has no power over us. What does this mean? It means we get the power to overcome whatever the world throws us, at us through Christ. <clears throat> Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But he also said every day will have its own trouble. You are called to overcome every day by the wisdom from above. You might have the knowledge, even though it's given by God, the Word of God, yes? And you might have an understanding of the Word of God, so does the devil. But what the devil lacks is 
God's wisdom. And that's what you need. You need wisdom, you need knowledge, and you need understanding. But you get basic knowledge from the Word of God, and you have an understanding based on in that intellect you have in your years, yes, yes, and also from God, yes, if you are so inclined, but the wisdom has to be from God before there is an earthly wisdom that is demonic. So, therefore, why did John the Baptist come? He came to prepare the way for the Messiah, not to get into marital counseling or any other ministry. He came just to prepare for the way for the Messiah. Was his sin abounding in his time? Just like in our time, there was an abundance of sin. But he was not called to identify all the sinners of the world. He was called to prepare the way for the Messiah. And in that, he might have failed, he might not have failed. But we know that he was offended because Jesus says so. And he, while in prison, sent his disciples asking, Are you the Messiah or should we wait for someone else? Yes. <laughs> that question shows that he was not very happy, yes, with what Jesus was doing. Whatever the case is, the scripture is not explicit in saying so. But we can understand that we are called, we are all called for something. And we must fulfill that something we are called for, we are made for. Hallelujah. Does that make sense to you? While if you are a husband, you know that you are in, going to be in sin and you are going to continue to sin. But God will help you. And so by God's grace, you will stop sinning. What was a sin maybe 10 years ago in your life may not be a sin now because God has helped you get that much stronger. Like that, God perfects that which concerns you. Now, the same way you've given someone that the that is known as a wife, yes? <laughs> With spot, wrinkle, and blemish. And you're supposed to love them unconditionally, just like God loves you unconditionally. And it's not to point out their faults and their mistakes, but you're supposed to cover for them. You're supposed to approach God in prayer, and you're supposed to get the wisdom to cover for it. Hallelujah, am I making sense? Yes? Yes. If they don't believe in Jesus Christ, be it husband or wife, there's a difference between questioning and doubting. If they doubt the Messiah, have nothing to do with them, yes? In other words, it's not your God-given right to sin, yes? No. There is sin in this world, but you have everything you need to overcome that sin. Am I making sense? Now, I haven't covered the whole gamut or the whole topic, but I hope to shed some light in this area, especially in the person who is asking this question. Yes, we're all in sin, in one way or the other. We're not perfect, but we are being perfected. What may be sin today may not be valid tomorrow. Hallelujah, because God perfects that which concerns us. Now, is there sin in this world? Of course there is. Are we called to identify all of that? Well, good luck if you are going to do that, yes? But don't be a Pharisee speak about who saves you from that sin and his name is Jesus Christ and his saving is called salvation hallelujah and you need that and I need that and salvation has three tenses if you call upon the name of the Lord you are saved yes you are seated with Christ but that doesn't stop you from being a rascal that's called sanctification I spoke about the earthly understanding of the Word of God. You might know from Genesis to Revelation, but that makes no difference. You might have an understanding from Genesis to Revelation, but that makes no difference. Is that understanding from God? 
See, what did the devil use but scriptures to tempt Jesus? Hallelujah. So quoting scriptures is at best pharisaical. And God and Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. Yes. So let's not be pharisaical about this. Let's check the log in our eyes before we check what the beam is in other people's eyes. Let's check our own lives to see if we are walking with the Lord. Hallelujah. I may not quote all the scriptures. Like I said, I, I haven't run the whole gamut. I'm not giving you a sermon. I'm just trying to make you understand what you, it means for you to be called, for you to do what you're called. For that is what you'll be accountable for. And John the Baptist, maybe who over exceeded his authority. Maybe he was meant to be one of the disciples. I don't know. We can have perfect insight, yes? But the fact is, he lost his head, yes? Literally, yes? And Jesus went about doing good and he had compassion on the sick. What did Jesus come? Hallelujah. To save you and me. Without him, we'd be lost. So, speak about who he is. It's the grace of God. And I end with this. Uh, right now, where we worship right across the street, is a poly police station. And uh, in on TV, um, we read that they're the law enforcement, yes? We pastors are grace empowerment. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are not called to enforce the law, yes? We are called to enforce the grace that supersedes the law, the grace of God. Hallelujah. Upon your life and my life. I hope I'm making perfect sense. Hallelujah. Thank you.